good day and welcome to our program. Today we prepare to celebrate the 26th anniversary on the International Day for Biological Diversity under the theme Our Biodiversity, Our Food and Our Health. This is an ideal opportunity to include sectors that are not traditionally involved in biodiversity and biodiversity as we know is the variety of living things, plants, animals, and microorganisms, and the environments in which they reside. Every year on the 22nd of May, this Convention on Biological Diversity, which St. Lucia is a party to, celebrates the Convention on Biological Diversity and the International Day of Biological Diversity on the 22nd of May. This year, our theme, our biodiversity, our health, and our food. Biodiversity, as we know, is the foundation for human health. It underpins the functioning of ecosystems we depend on for food, for clean water, for medicines, as well as diseases and climate regulation. Agrobiodiversity has its potential to support human nutrition and good health. It is critical as a component in global sustainability. So, tonight we have an interesting conversation. Our topic is can biodiversity provide alternates for treatments for cancer and other diseases? But first, let's take a look at a clip that was prepared for this occasion with some useful information on uses of biodiversity and their expanding use in the Caribbean region. Currently, human trials are underway to test the effectiveness of cancer-treating drugs developed from a microfungi called Salinospora tropica. It is found exclusively in the marine sediments of the Bahamian coast. The Ferdalans, St. Lucia's endemic viper, is also currently being researched for its benefits to the medical field. There is an antivenom which comes out of Costa Rica, actually which originated with a, from a St. Lucian snake in the Kentucky Zoo in the, in the, in the US. Here in St. Lucia, that snake is not protected and they're really there's no laws that protect the intellectual property rights for this particular snake. In, for example, um, Brazil, where they have a similar snake, they have researched the, the venom and they've developed a, a blood pressure drug, which is used blood pressure and heart disease drug. In our particular case, we believe that the, the venom that we have here is actually has something in it that can cause the blood to clot. And for people who are bleeding and so on, there may be potential um, things there, chemicals which may actually, if researched properly, could be used to good advantage. The recent cases highlighted in St. Lucia and the Bahamas are not standalone or a new phenomenon. Recently in St. Kitts, the government was approached for information on removing microorganisms for cataloging as a new species in Germany. In St. Lucia, the Farmers with Disabilities Beekeeping Association has also been approached to collaborate with international researchers to assess the properties of the honey they produce. We have an idea that the campus has some beneficial properties as far as uh, the honey produced out of it is concerned. The phenomenon of scientists and researchers exploring indigenous genetic resources is not limited to the material, but extends to the local knowledge associated with the use of these materials. Over the years, traditional knowledge has become vulnerable to exploitation by international bodies for use in both the cosmetic and medicinal industries. Since they made us feel our traditional knowledge was invaluable, it had no, no price tag on it but we have come of age and we realize that our body of knowledge which is our traditional knowledge is as important as conventional knowledge and even more important because it is ours so you were tuned into perspectives and that was a clip or a few clips from the nagoya protocol documentary prepared for saint lucia and it features lucky for us a star in our studio uh, today <laughs> Um, uh, Mr. Laura Jopier, who is an ethnobotanist who has been doing research on the uses of St. Lucia's plants 
uh, from at least the last 30 years. He's also joined by Dr. Gilbert St. Rose, who is a integrative healthcare consultant at uh, Eden Herbs Limited. She's the past president of the Caribbean Association of Researchers and, and Herbal Practitioners, and as I mentioned, has been doing incredible research along with Mr. Jopier in the region on some of the plants and the animals that we have and of course some of the uses that they can be put to. So welcome and thank you so much for joining, joining us on Perspectives as we have this conversation about biodiversity, our food and our health. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Shana. It's a pleasure to be here. I know we have a lot to say, so we're warming up. Mm -hmm. And um, But I, I wanted to start with, with just some of your, your thoughts about the, um, the, the clip that we had and the work that you have been doing. Ladies first. Yes. Ladies first, of course. <laughs> okay, well, you know, this clip really tells us the importance of looking at what we have in terms of utilizing it mm -hmm. and tonight we're talking about our health so it's a useful point to remember that most drugs are initially derived from plants mm -hmm. um, what happens in the industry is that these um, formulas from the plants are copied and made into pharmaceuticals but you know it's well known that the source the initial information did come from the plants. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's high time that we take it more seriously in terms of utilizing the plants because our population, our patients, they love their herbs, they love their plants. Mm -hmm. So it's high time the Ministry of Health and the OECS, you know, embrace that, what's happening, and deal with it in a comprehensive way. Yes. But we have seen uh, while you, the pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceutical companies recognizing that value and asserting that value to plants and their, these active chemical compounds that they have in them that allow them to be transferred and made into medicines. So um, already the recognition is there, mm -hmm. at least from the pharmaceuticals who are benefiting greatly from, these, these, um, from these, the use of the plants. And over to you, sir. The, the star of our film, and of course, with uh, your involvement, not only in the, the uses of plants, but also in ethnobotany, which really looks at how co people have used plants culturally. Um, and so your expertise, our interactions have been along the lines of traditional knowledge and um, the value and the wealth of that knowledge, as we saw in, in the clip. Um, that a, a lot of times uh, it, is, it is taken for granted, it is used, it is given away freely, and because it is given away so freely, there's no value assigned to it. Mm. Um, but your thoughts? Thanks for the, intro the, the healthy introduction. I am so happy to be here with Dr. St. Rose. We've gone back since the 80s in this, in this arena. Yes, I don't know why you put me in this thing. <laughs> I, was, I was an egg mama just living in the bush. <laughs> and Dr. Sidros dra dragged me into this thing, but no regrets, Not at all. no regrets. Yes. But I want to put biodiversity in the broader context of the web of life in terms of um, the biocultural heritage that we've inherited from our ancestors. In fact, the, the web of life consists of the biosphere plus the ethnosphere, and together they give us this web of life which we are all born into, which is called culture. And it, uh, as it spins, we to spin it. And by that I mean it is a, a kind of a web that we are born into. Humanity is born into a web of, 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 of circumstances, a, a web of significance that we ourselves have spun. That's an old anthropological definition of what the whole web of life is. And, so the biosphere is what's around us, the plants, the animals, the air that we breathe, the river water, the, the, the sea, the, the landscape and the seascape and the skyscape and, and how we live as humans in that space and how we utilize that space for our enjoyment, for our entertainment, for our, most importantly for our survival, for our medicine, for our food, for our games, for our... The way we live, for mm -hmm. our culture, and that's the important in, in my mind of biodiversity 
biodiversity is the essence of life in my mind mm -hmm. because it, in, it, it encapsulates how we live in that space that we call planet Earth, mm -hmm. you know, and how we use our ingenuity, our, our, our imagination and our creativity to arrive at what we now call medicine, which is a quest. Nobody has all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's a quest for healing. Yes, Doc? Oh, yes. Indeed. It's a quest. Yes. Nobody has all the answers. Yes. So what we have here is a, a sort of a ma what I am proposing, really, and it's not new, is a marriage of the two disciplines, the conventional and the traditional, to arrive, as it were, as a, as, as a healthy equilibrium mm -hmm. in our journey as human beings, how we want to live and live healthy on that little space we call planet Earth. So you, you, I'm going to ask uh, something that, that you ask about something that you brought up, which is the medicine as well as the use. Um, I, it would be very interesting to know if uh, this is one of the things that I'm always curious about how our culture has inspired the growth of science. Um, it would be interesting to know if not only were the plants um, that were identified by companies that have gone in and um, done their research, but also the ways in which those cultures use them. Um, so if we know that the Arawaks use a particular plant or something, was it used for the same thing and um, that the uh, pharmaceutical or synthetic medicine was eventually, have you found in your, in your studies um, that it is the same use or it is used the same way or it's just a, a shot in the dark and sometimes it works out? Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is the research eh, that yeah. we've done, and right. you know, we should um, let everyone know about Chamel. Mm -hmm. Right. It's called Traditional Medicines of the Islands, mm -hmm. and it was born in 1982, and now it's research occurring in 23 countries, mm -hmm. English, Spanish, and French. Mm -hmm. And uh, the process by which we looked at the plants was a process of validation. We actually had surveys going out into the community, asking the persons what plans they use for particular conditions, and then having identified that this is the proper plant, the uh, process called taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Very important because, you know, somebody will say this plant looks like that mm -hmm. and think that's it. It's that's very important, mm -hmm. the question of taxonomy okay. for identification of the plant. And having identified that this is the plant, we take it to the laboratory and do the pharmacological work to extract the constituents, the phytonutrients, and really check that it has the pharmacological properties mm -hmm. that the persons have been using it for. And then this information is taken back to the community, and it's called TRADIF, which is the fusion oh. of the scientific information that has been got from you know, the surveys. The and, uh, you know, sitting with us here, Laurent Japier mm -hmm. has been the one really going out doing these surveys. Okay. Going Mount Jimmy and getting plants named after him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's so full of energy and so full of his own initiation that I'm so happy that, you know, at the time that I was the rep for um, OAS, Organization of American States. Mm -hmm. It was called Ibu Trop Project. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the economic biology of underutilized tropical plants. So there was this project in the 80s, and I went to the conferences, and they were training persons on herbarium development. Mm -hmm. And I came back home, and I met Laura with all his enthusiasm and ready to move. And you know, he went to get trained at University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm in Trinidad and herbarium development and, you know, the energy that takes him out into the bushes mm -hmm. to collect the plants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that sitting at the Gabriel Charles mm -hmm. Forestry Department at Union mm -hmm. is a herbarium. And I'll let Laura tell you about this herbarium because he was one of the main persons with Vernus Lane, a Peace Corps volunteer who put together all this you know, plants that's sitting, just sitting, not really being appreciated, underutilized. Mm -hmm. underutilized. Mm -hmm. We're back to underutilization. Mm -hmm. 
So, Laura, tell them a bit about the herbarium, because, you know, this place at Union is a place that should be developed into a park, mm -hmm. a where persons can go mm -hmm. and recreate, eh? recreate, <laughs> recreate, and see the plants and learn the plants, and so much can be done, because there are lots of grounds just wasted there. Uh, that yes. um, place is so amazing, because what I realize about it is most of the plants, uh, the herbs and things that we use to cook, mm -hmm. uh, are are healing. They have these healing properties. So we are practicing preventative med um, medicine by using these um, these plants and these herbs. And uh, maybe you can even tell us some of the the ones that you like. That uh, <laughs> if not the herbarium, but the best ones that, that you should at least have one growing in your yard or um, or have a, a little bit of every day. Well, let me let me piggyback a bit on what mm -hmm. um, Doctor Doctor Saint Rose have said. This thing started in the nineteen. I mean. My, my connection with plants is as a young man, growing up in the St. Lucian culture. Your parents tell you, I went to a family, 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 and that's how we knew it. We knew it by the local names. But as we communicate with the outer world, we had to find a way of communicating with the outer world. Mm -hmm. And the way to communicate the universal language is plant taxonomy, where you identify plants through their, through their scientific names. And so that takes a bit of training that you understand what plant taxonomy is. Mm -hmm. And plant taxonomy is the way science um, taxonomizes or identifies plants based on the characteristics. By that I mean if you have kinky hair like me, you dark skin, you're a black person, mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. If you have straighter hair and you're from a certain part of the world, you're Indian. So in the plant world, there's something called taxonomy, where you describe plants based on its characteristics. So plants are placed into several families, several genuses, and then the specific, for example, my name is Laurent Jean-Pierre. I am Laurent, that's my generic name, that's my, sorry, my specific name. But my family name is Jean-Pierre. Jean so Laurent tells me that is the name that I am, that is who I am. I am named, I am Laurent, but Jean-Pierre is my family name. So plants, we have that system, the linear system, or the binomial system mm -hmm. of, of genus and species and family. It's a science. Mm -hmm. And so when I met Doc, I knew only local names, right? <laughs> we only know local names. Go Pompon, mm -hmm. Shadow Benny, mm -hmm. and do not poo poo these names because it's a means of communication in our local in our local in a local domain, as mm -hmm. it were. But then you have to move away from your local local domain to communicate with the entire world, mm -hmm. and therefore you need to have scientific names. So the, when you go to a scientific conference, yes, you will have the local name. Go pon pon in your paper, but you also, in order to communicate with fellow scientists, you need to know the scientific name, which is called Leonoptis nepitifolia. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's Latin. Mm -hmm. And so that was how the work began in collecting the plants, collaborating with Harvard University, Puerto Rico, um, Herbaria, Herbaria in, uh, Herbarium in, in Puerto Rico, and in Trinidad and Tobago, and around the region with the, the, look, the experts at the time were, of mm. course, Dr. Adams and the whole historicity <laughs> of the whole research mm. with what we call the endangered botanists at the time. Mm. Um, Harvard, Howard, and all of these guys, um, um, Leo Shea from Puerto Rico, and all of these, the gurus of mm. botany at the time of the Caribbean region. And we discovered several new species. A of lot of new species um, endemic to St. Mm -hmm. Lucia in our surgeon. We didn't know the word endemic, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's after the survey we begin to understand what is an endemic species, yes, and the vocabulary begin to change. We begin to know plants by some of the scientific names. And in all of that, we must give a lot of um, um, a lot of praise to people like Do um, Coco Charles, mm -hmm. Gabriel Coco Charles, Coco Charles mm -hmm. who had a vision. To me, that's one of the greatest Saint Lucians who've worked the land. Mm -hmm. I mean, he saved us with the forest and water, and because water Absolutely. is life, and saved the forest. We have not given Coco Charles his due, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Coco Charles, humble inclusion, mm -hmm. who made a yes. mum of contribution to our biodiversity and the saving of our powers and service in forests and so forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, Coco Charles, he had his ways and we agree and disagree. C'est la vie. Mm -hmm. But this was a, somebody I think we have not given his due. Mm -hmm. 
in terms of this contribution to our civilization as a people, that St. Lucian civilization, mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. You know, I flag him and I mm -hmm. put him very high on that, on the, on the pedestal in terms of St. Lucian civilization. Mm -hmm. I mean, a man fought battles, you know, with the Legion Compton and so forth to save, uh, to save us the, the mm -hmm. dam and forest and all of that. Anyway, I'm diverting a bit. But, uh, but of yeah. course we have to say that yeah. the establishment yeah. of our forest reserves, the protection of the forest, uh, the biodiversity yeah, of, of, of Coco Charles. Uh -huh. uh, 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 and, and, and more than that, he, he embraced the vision of, of, of at the time and began the whole research into our, our, our plants mm -hmm. and the uses. And that's where it, we, we zero into the uses. Yeah, what absolutely. our grandmother told us. It is it him? valid? Is it so just Bagai Savan? Old wives' tales. Yeah. Old wives' yeah. tales and so on. <laughs> and that was where the research came in. Mm. Yes, you need to know the plants because if all your chemistry is perfect, your biochemistry is well, but you do not know which plants you're dealing with, mm -hmm. it becomes null and void. That's why taxonomists feel we are the elite in the <laughs> research. In the research process. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Doc. No, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important. The identification. The identification. Plant identification. That's the most important. What are you yes. researching? Yes. What are you doing your biochemistry on? And in a little bit, we will show from the transition and some of the medicines that have come out, from of the raw materials and the raw herbs and plants, and then the transition into what they look like as medications. Uh, but at this point, I want to introduce our audience who's been keenly listening and uh, come from far and wide, um, from the OECS, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. We have representatives. We have representatives from ICA, the Ayanola Council for the Advancement of Rastafari. We have our creatives, our beekeepers, our apiculturists, the Ayanola Apiculture um, Collective, Kafa, uh, and GIZ. We have a researcher who will be talking about some of the science that is coming out in um, bee venom as a mm -hmm. health um, as a, a health treatment. Um, and you, you're interested in the beekeepers, I suppose, Absolutely. the honey, <laughs> the honey production, yeah. the propolis, the, um, uh, the Department of Fisheries, who is key to our, our marine biodiversity conservation and our food security with their boat to throat uh, initiatives and other agro-tourism initiatives and the Department of Forestry, which continues the good work that Coco Charles has started and, um, and you know, uh, keeping our biodiversity in a place where it can continue to provide our food and our health. So I believe yes, we are uh, due for a break in a little bit, but do you, yes, Dr. Well, just before the break, mm -hmm. you know, as Noah <laughs> mentioned Coco Charles, and, you know, I mentioned this forestry department, which mm -hmm. is luckily at least named after him. You know, yes, keep his memory alive. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we should make a pledge or something to <laughs> really develop that place. Okay. And I'm so happy to hear that the diagnostic lab has been opened at Union. For food and health. Food and well, health. That's so right. This is excellent. For food so safety. if we tie that in with, you know, Great. a recreational area, Coco Charles, and that way we can really start mm -hmm. utilizing but our okay. But before we go, sorry, Doug. <laughs> Biodiversity is not just on land. Eh? It's Absolutely. Not it's the oh, yeah, well, seascape, the landscape. Lots of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And at that time when we were doing our research, we had people in, in fisheries doing important work in fisheries. People like Crispin, Vaughn Charles, and many others who were mm -hmm. doing their bit in trying to save the ocean, uh, the, ocean the rivers, and, the, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance. That's a healthy equilibrium. Mm -hmm. that we are trying to reach in terms of the way we utilize, but at the same time, the way we conserve. Excellent. In fact, what, uh, uh, and that, 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 that brings me into things like food security mm -hmm. and food sovereignty. How do we utilize our plants in our everyday lives and at the same time we conserve them, mm -hmm. that they are not over-exploited. They are exploited, but not over-exploited. Sustainably used. The sustainable mm -hmm. use of our resources. Okay. Because before Coco Charles, and I have to go to back to Coco Charles, there was no such word as conservation. <laughs> we thought that that Bagayufe, we, we said something in Creole. That's a myth. You, big species can become extinct. Mm -hmm. That can happen. You know, and we have species that have become extinct in this country. So we have to be very conscious that species can become extinct. And so we need to use our resources 
respectfully uh -huh. in, in such a way, in a way that we do not over exploit them. And Coco Charles was the one who brought that to our vocabulary. Okay. And this man is, you know, high up in, in, well, in my, in my <laughs> you know, my, 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 oh, my stage in terms of a St. Lucian who's made a, 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 a remarkable a, contribution to this, to this civilization okay. as we know it. Um, luckily for us, we are observing International Day for Biological Diversity, but there are other days coming up, Oceans Day is also coming up, and World Environment Day. So these are other opportunities for us to have these conversations. And this uh, um, program, Perspectives, will be continuing. So do tune in at this time for other programs, which will be focusing on oceans and other environmental issues. Um, so we will take a break now, and when we come back, we go to our audience, we get into the meat of the matter on this topic. Can biodiversity provide alternatives to cancer and other diseases? What are the other diseases? What have we already had successes with? What are we exploring? What are we looking forward to in the future? And of course, we will invite our guests to make their contributions. Like I said, they've come from all over and they, they're anxious to, to say their, their thoughts on this topic. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <music> To keep it fresh, chill it. To get it hot, cook it. To keep it clean, wash it. Do all that and more with top brand appliances from Quartz. Try that recipe on a new stove. Keep those fruit bowls chilled in the latest design bridge. Get laundry done with a brand new washer and dryer combo. Purchase any Whirlpool product and get a chance to win $8,000. Shop with Quartz Ready Finance and pay nothing until June. Only at Quartz, bringing value home. She keep nagging me about changing this and changing that. Only fool in my head, man. She want a new kitchen. Something about a sexy front door. <laughs> she want wooden flooring and LED light throughout the house. Hey, 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 that, hey, that. Renick and Company has great deals on all of them things. Check them out. That's it. Wasn't it about the place you told me about the other day again? Whether planning to build a house or remodel an old one, you'll be glad to know that Rennick & Company has some of the best deals on doors, windows, flooring, classic and modern style kitchens, LED lights, and much more. Rennick & Company, shopping the world for you. And welcome back to Perspectives. Our topic on the observation of International Day for Biodiversity is, can biodiversity provide alternate treatments for cancer and other diseases? And we already have started to be answer that question. We have in studio with us, Dr. Gilbertha St. Rose and Mr. Laura Jopier, who have been doing research on plants and plant uses in St. Lucia for the last 30 years, and have discovered some wonders in our plants and in our marine space and have some of them right here for us and so earlier we talked about uh, go paw paw being the treatment for the go whim the big cold mm -hmm. and i re i remember recently there was this cold that no one else could cure nobody could find a cure for and everybody was looking for go paw paw and we couldn't find it and um and is, is there something special about it that um 
that allows the colds to be healed and so on. Has the research been done? Is this an, an, an area for emerging scientists who are interested? Uh, so to the young persons who are listening and who are considering careers in taxonomy and ethnobotany and so on, are those some of the areas that we need to look at. Um, we also have some rosemary. We have the rosemary plant in studio. And this rosemary has pro proven some hair miracles. Um, and we have some creams and so on treatments and different things that have been made from them. So I'm going to allow the, the experts to talk a little bit about some of the cures, some of the things, that, some of the other solutions that are out there that we can start to investigate and look at. Yes, Janelle. So, in fact, um, we've utilized uh, what we call the ethnobotany. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's uh, important to understand uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. So, we have the herbs. For example, this is twatas. Smells nice, tastes nice. Mm -hmm. So, we've done the research on it, and now we can package it. So, we've packaged it in this and gives the instruction on how to use it. Um, good for colds, good for relaxation, good for stomach ailments. So, you know, here what we've done is taken some of the herbs after they've been researched and uh, be able to give you the exact dosage of what should be taken. This one, I'm interested in them too. Mm -hmm. The All dosage right. of what to be taken. But, you know, it's very important to do the chemistry, and we do that. So we haven't done the taxonomy to identify it. The next thing is to be aware of the chemistry, especially when you mix in more than one okay. herb. And then in my practice, for example, we look at integrative medicine. So persons come and they're on pharmaceuticals. And then I'll decide, well, which herb they can use with which mm -hmm. pharmaceutical or if they can gradually, over a period of time, move from the pharmaceutical to the herbal. But ultimately, we want persons to eat to be healthy. Here we go. Eh? So mm -hmm. the diet and what mm -hmm. you eat should be what keeps you healthy. And of course, we know the importance of the lifestyle. A lot of it is talk, talk, but action mm -hmm. is very, very important. The action mm -hmm of eating the right things. Well, first of all, to know. There's a lot of my patients say, oh, I don't know what to eat. Okay. They don't know That's what good. to eat. Start. So sharing the knowledge, you know, educating. And uh, sometimes uh, information is there, the education is there, but people, they don't invest in themselves enough mm -hmm. in terms of educating themselves. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's a fault of who? Eh? So, the person has to take responsibility, but in particular, the Ministry of Health should be pushing because there's a Department of Health Education which is there to educate persons. And sometimes I don't think they, you know, push enough the importance of eating correctly. For example, look at this one here. This is Toloma. A lot of people know about Toloma. And it's very good on the digestion. Um, it's uh, very good in terms of being gluten free and I always want to talk about gluten intolerance because that's a big problem because all the white flour and all the wheat that you know we get and we consume is the cause of a lot of ill health but when we rely on our ground provisions our you know mm -hmm. local foods then you know most of these all of them but gluten-free, so you don't come up with this gluten intolerance. And I'll take the opportunity to remind us of the importance of the organically growing, the, you know, the foods and the herbs, because it's happening and it continues to happen that okay. we're eating poison. Yeah, we're being served poison. And food should be our medicine, not our poison. And mm -hmm. some people, you know, they don't want to eat greens. They're scared of greens, man, mm -hmm. because greens can be a great source of poison. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's good when you have, like, the Ministry of Agriculture encouraging backyard gardening and pushing organically mm -hmm. grown herbs. So, you know, you're asking okay. Janelle about what herbs should you have in your garden. You know, you should have in your garden... You get up in the morning, mm -hmm. you want a cup of basil tea, you want a cup of twatas, okay. you want some parsley, celery. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all that in your garden and you're quite sure that it's good for you. Okay. So the backyard gardening project of the Ministry of Agriculture, I would like mm -hmm. to applaud it. Okay. 
okay. and uh, you know to make it essential eh? because I was listening to the first or second program uh -huh. that you all had in the People's Forum and I lamented and I think I must mention the name of uh -huh. Mr. Alexander was it sitting in the you know the, the, pesti uh -huh. the pesticide control board uh -huh. and he was quite negative as to the possibility of having, you know, organically grown food. Yeah. And as long as this mindset is where policies and actions should be keeping our people healthy, we are doomed. Well, because the, it's mm -hmm. difficult to organically mm -hmm. grow, it but it's, mm -hmm. it's possible. It's, and it's and necessary. And we should strive. It is very necessary. In fact, it's essential. Otherwise, you're putting poison in your system and mm -hmm. trying to take poison. Sometimes the pharmaceuticals are poison mm -hmm. to try and treat it. Well, so we have to get ourselves out of that. Okay. The, and movement. the ministry supports the, um, the organic agriculture movement. Uh, we actually do have a rep in the, um, in the audience who is, is part of the initiative to grow organic, part of the good food revolution. Mm -hmm. So there are steps that are being taken. And I think more and more people are realizing this connection, this automatic connection between what you put in and what comes out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so back to the, um, the idea of the other plants and things that we can, we can use. Um, was <laughs> I would like to go back to the historicity of mm -hmm. the whole thing. I mean, in our culture, um, we need to look in retrospect, in introspect, and in prospect. <laughs> look back so that we could look forward and also examine our own environmental footprint or our footprint, as it were, <laughs> what we feed ourselves, what the cost of feeding ourselves, how much does it take from the environment, uh, as we feed ourselves, at what cost do we feed ourselves? Very important things we need to ourselves. The mm -hmm. simplicity of living, like St. Francis of Assisi says, live simple that others may simply live. How much that idea of grandiosity and conspicuous consumerism, all of this has to be factored in the equation. Mm -hmm. You know, so when, when we began in that simplicity of your mom going to tell you take to a fake or soul, we, we sometimes we put that. But biodiversity is a, is, is, is a web. The use of plants is not just for medicine. Yes, medicine is essential, but it is for flu, food. It is for clothing. Mm -hmm. It is, is for our entertainment. We use plants for games. Why are we games? The seeds. We use plants not just for for the in vivo, but in the external sphere. Mm -hmm. For shampoo, for example, you have cactus. Mm -hmm. Very efficacious for good cleans, cleaning and washing your hair, for your scalp and so forth. You have lalwe, uh, in mostly all shampoos, you have, mm -hmm. you have um, aloe vera. And so these are in our backyard. Why aren't we use, utilizing them? Why aren't we saving our import bills? By using what is growing in our backyard, the the vevin lachi what, oh the 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 cosol when you cannot sleep to put you to sleep to help you sleep, for the fever grass, um um what we what we call um citronelle, mm -hmm. so the whole thing is a web. The the bees, Absolutely. as they pollinate the plants and the very important it was this Einstein who said the dead bees begin begin, begin dying. Humanity begins to die as well. Very important. So we need to create that healthy equilibrium, that balance in the way. And that is why I want to introduce this whole idea of the Jardin Creole, yes. where you have plants of, in the specific positions and compositions where they're supposed to be. And that came out of, birthed out of our experience from enslavement on the periphery of the of the, of the plantations, where we begin developing radical that build wealth for us, mm -hmm. that we could buy land, feed ourselves. He who feeds you controls you. So we need to begin feeding ourselves and medicating ourselves with the knowledge base that we have. Thank God for science. We have sort of authenticated because our Western trained doctors mm -hmm. came back with a kind of a little bit of arrogance. Not their fault. That's where they were in their journey. 
<laughs> you know, I don't blame them. You go to school and you, uh, you start poo-pooing the, the herbal medicine and, and what your grandmother gave you and so forth. Say bye for you. But with time, we've come of, we have come of age. We, are, we realize that what our grandmother's, the grandmother medicine has value. And science is now authenticating what our grandmother said. It is, is, that's why we went back to the laboratory. You know, to do what I call the, the microscopic um, 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 approach. But we ha before the microscopic approach, we had what we call the, 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 the sense approach. Our grandparents had a kind of a sense where there is the doctrine of signature. Um, by the doctrine of signature, I mean something shaped like a hat is probably good for the hat through trial and error and, 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 and decades of, of experimenting. They've arrived. So, the point I'm making here, let's not poo-poo the, the, the body of knowledge, that traditional knowledge that our ancestors handed down to us. Mm -hmm. So I say, I wish yes, my mind. Mm -hmm. And we need to cherish it and work with it, dovetail it. I'm not, I'm not advocating just traditional medicine and no scientific medicine. I believe it's a bird with two wings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, truth never lies, as Togo says, in the mm -hmm. opposing forces although you need both for movement, but in the reconciliation of the two. We need to dovetail these two bodies of knowledge so that we could move on with our civilization. Mm -hmm. But the point I want to flag here, that that body of knowledge, which we call traditional knowledge, it is important Absolutely. for our survival, mm -hmm. for our economy. Biodiversity is important for economy. For example, they still have something called chustic, you know, guanya load is efficacious scientifically proven to be efficacious for brushing the teeth for the gums mm -hmm. very important it strengthens your molars and your premolars in jamaica they used to make a, to a, a toothpaste out of it called trudent that has gone out of production now perhaps at the cost of production so all of us seem to call colgate and so forth mm -hmm. but i still lose to after 60 years man i'm still mm -hmm. in this student <laughs> I, I go with it Trudent. all over the world Mm -hmm. All over my two stick. Mm -hmm. So I, the case I'm making is that we are now educated young St. Lucians. We're not so young anymore. Yes. But mm -hmm. now we have taken that body of knowledge that our ancestors gave us. We've gone back to the library to authenticate, to validate, as, as we say, mm -hmm. in Tramil. And that's a research that we've done for 30 years in Tramil, all over the Caribbean, with scientists of all stripes from biochemists to, to, to medical doctors to, to uh, anthropologists and botanists and taxonomists in order to arrive at where we are. And now Doc is putting it together in a way that um, those who haven't got the time to boil the free leaves, I still advocate the boiling of the free leaves, but if you pan it, uni prepare And people like Henri Joseph, um, um, from from high uh, from from Guadeloupe, biochemist is producing medicine now that's already on the European market, tested and tried, you know, from our plants, from the knowledge that was handed down to us by our ancestors. You have people like Emmanuel Nussan, who is doing his thing in Martinique, and we have Doc here doing her thing here, you know, some with more scientific rigor than others. But nonetheless, nua sushime, nua sushime, nuka de ba. So I want to encourage people to, lead, to dig deep into their own cultural heritage. That's the point I want to make tonight. That you dig deep into your own cultural heritage. There are gems there. There's a lot there. There's e economic benefits yes. for us to look back at our biodiversity, not only for medicine, but for food, for shelter, for clothing, especially in, the, in, 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 the, in this climate of climate change. How do we feed ourselves? He who feeds us, control us. How do we medicate ourselves? How do we manage our resources for our own benefit and the, and the surplus we could sell to the world? <laughs> we must never go to the table of civilization empty-handed, like we don't have a culture. We don't have nothing to offer from our Creole language to our medicine, to our foods, to our way of living our mayok where we transform that into oh. into into cancer it's good That's, for cancer I, 
colon I cancer. It's, it's when you one eat of my cassava, favorite. Cassava, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Gluten free. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the roughage in it. Help in, there's a place in Africa where they did survey, and it's not endemic or indigenous to Africa, you know, cassava. It was introduced to Africa. And today, they study certain places in Africa where people have no colon cancer. And they, among other things, is because of the use of cassava. How many of us eat cassava still? Mayok, the, 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 I call these guys who carry that basket all over castries from, from um, Olion, the, the, the bread carriers. Bringing a, a vital service, and it's young people doing that. That's right. Carrying all of them baskets, selling cassava. Pay l'argent. For who pay? Pay l'argent pour cassava la basse. Bon, it's good for your colon. It helps if you if colon cancer. And there's a specific place in Africa where they found, among other things, there was no colon cancer, and they was wondering why the use of cassava. Okay. So my point is, let us bask in what is ours and let us take it to a new level. That is my argument here tonight. We've appreciated the value of biodiversity culturally, for food, for shelter, and I, of course, want, I'm thanking you for bringing up its use for sustainable livelihoods, you know, for economic benefits, not just as a, a, a tea boutique thing, but as a real industry. The beauty of these spa products and these high-end products is that they would fetch a higher price. Because they are niche. and dyes yeah, cosmetics and just and, name it. And your you beautiful know? spa yes, elements. You know? so, so it is important that people who are interested in this field, there, there are so many opportunities that young people can get into. And um, as we are talking about this, we can get ready to see the next clip which talks about persons valuing these resources and putting a value on them um, through actions being taken internationally pr to protect uh, biodiversity and intellectual property as well as the traditional knowledge that is associated with the use of biodiversity. So we will look at the clip. The Caribbean is a rich biodiversity hotspot. It has over 11,000 plant species, and about 72 of these are found only in this region. This richness also extends to the Caribbean people. Their traditional knowledge of the region's varied natural resources has integrated nature into the economic and health sectors worldwide. It has also drawn many to research and use the region's biodiversity for medicinal, cosmetic, and pharmaceutical purposes. For example, the glaucoma medication Canosol is made from cannabis. However, Caribbean islands have fallen prey to biopiracy, where a country's resources are accessed and developed commercially, but the country gets little or no benefit from it. As the world benefits from the Caribbean's biodiversity, countries need to be compensated for their commercial use. Lawmakers need to ensure that their countries are legally prepared to give access to and benefits from commercial use of genetic resources. To ensure prior informed consent and mutually agreed terms of access established by the Nagoya Protocol, the Global Environment Facility, GEF, United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, IUCN, are jointly providing support to countries at different levels in order to advance towards functional access and benefit sharing. Under the Nagoya Protocol, countries from which natural resources are obtained for commercial developments are entitled to compensation. It also ensures indigenous knowledge from groups such as the Maroons, Rastafarians, and Amerindians can be credited and compensated if their traditional knowledge has been used for commercial purposes. Caribbean islands are putting the Nagoya Protocol in their legislative framework to safeguard their country's biodiversity and traditional knowledge. Let us all work together to protect our resources, do valuable research, and reap the benefits of sustainable bioprospecting in the region.
Welcome back to Perspectives as we observe the 26th anniversary of the International Day for Biodiversity under the theme, Our Biodiversity, Our Food, Our Health. And in studio with us, Dr. Gilbert de St. Rose and Mr. Laura Jopier, and of course our guests from the OECS and various agencies around, the, around St. Lucia and around the region. Back to the topic of what illnesses can we cure, some of the popular ones, um, high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, what are some of the, the quick cures? I know there are no quick cures, but uh, what are some of the, has the research shown? Okay, so this question came from the audience there. Um, what can be used for high blood pressure? And you know, okay. this is one of the very common non-communicable diseases and one of those that you know, if um, poor treatment or under treatment lead to so many other complications. And um, it's one of the areas really that the ministries of health and even at OECS level should be, you know, looking at much more closely. To get straight to the point, in high blood pressure, well, there are, there are components to it. But in terms of the foods that you can use to lower your blood pressure, no, I brought us a tamarind. Oh. Yeah, some okay. persons, you know, you eat too much tamarind and you wonder why you might get a bit dizzy. Oh. It does lower the blood pressure. Okay. You don't have golden apple there. The pomsite, very good for lowering the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Things like your cristophene, you know, your garlic, all these can help to reduce the blood pressure, beet and so. Um, neem, there are lots of neem trees around. And neem, you know, it's not indigenous to us, but we've started planting. So the neem leaves, or if you don't like the bitter taste, you can have the capsules, Eden Herbs has put it together. Good old Ceresi, Kokom Kuli, Karaila, all this very good for lowering blood pressure. And this Ceresi, in addition, it will help with lowering the blood sugar in diabetics because you have lots of the combinations of high blood pressure and diabetes. And in addition to that, it will help to reduce cancer. In um, 1984 was when we formed the Caribbean Association for um, Carapa, mm -hmm. and it was restoring our heritage because we were finding that we were importing herbs for our use. For example, the Ceresi here, you can get it in combination with other herbs for lowering the blood sugar. And this is something you get all over the place, mm -hmm. eh? Ceresi. So it's a matter of us utilizing what we have and uh, getting back to you know what we can make the best use of because like i said this service will help to lower the blood pressure also good for diabetes and will fight cancer because cancer is one of those things that uh, develop as a result of too much inflammation in the system too much okay. toxins and the service is one of the herbs that can um, deal with that. Okay. We mentioned earlier that health and food production are all integrated and have to be sustainable. Um, we mentioned uh, the backyard gardening and the Gardesh uh, Creole, Jade Creole, which uh, folks can have their little herbs and so on growing in their yards. And of course, we have to mention the school feeding programs, the organic agriculture movement, and these are the initiatives which include all persons um, in the development of their food and in, in um, outlining their diets and what they eat, encouraging persons to eat what they grow and grow what they eat, <clears throat> and look at also the, the food miles, how far their food is imported from, and uh, as opposed to stuff that is locally grown and supports the local agriculture market. And so in, in that way, while we talk about agrobiodiversity and organic farming, I would like to invite our organic farmer, um, who's also in the audience right now, to just make his contribution uh, we realize that you know bio agrobiodiversity sustains healthy diets and livelihoods and can provide vital sources of micronutrients essential for good nutrition um, biodiversity includes the microorganisms that are helping our soil to uh, to break down nutrients and also to um, you know, creates the, the correct environment for crops to grow. Without biodiversity, we don't have pollinators, we don't have our, uh, the ability to reproduce. And you made that, that fact, which came out uh, recently to me, and, and I thought, what was the connection? But of course, if we don't have bees and we don't have pollinators, our sources of food will dwindle. Mm -hmm. so, so we have to be very grateful to our organic farmers who are ensuring 
that we eat healthy, the soil is taken care of, the water sources are not polluted with chemicals. Um, these farmers are supported by the Good Food Revolution as well as the Ministry of Agriculture. Oftentimes they support themselves. It is harder, we know it is harder to do organic agriculture, um, but it is necessary when we talk about health. Um, so of course, Ras Faye, Ras Emanuel, um, I would like, I welcome to the program, and of course, I want you to, to give you an opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and also it's a pleasure to see my colleague, mm -hmm. Laurent Chartier, go way back when. I remember the first ever ethnobotica botanical exhibition held in St. Lucia was staged in Sofouye at the Sofouye Town Hall, and it was no other than Laurent Chartier and myself. And I could tell you, we need another exhibition like this in St. Lucia. Because mm -hmm. need, we need an eye-opener. Because I remember that exhibition in Sokuye. We had persons from all walks of life. We had schools. We had individuals. And it was awesome. Well put together. Just about two to three weeks, we staged it. But at the end of it all, there were lessons to be learned. And I'm happy that we took that journey, and we are here today talking about biodiversity in the treatment of cancer and other diseases. Today, I <laughs> would say biodiversity in the treatment of cancer and other diseases is the way to go. Because we need to protect our biodiversity. Because that's only what we have, not for survival, but for liberty. People talk about surviving. We do not survive on Mother Nature. We live. This is why Mother Nature has all what that's in there that we could live, not survive. Going back to organic agriculture, very, very important to our bio biodiversity. Because when we look at our microorganisms in organic agriculture, it's very vital to sustain our livelihoods, also sustaining our health. Especially we're looking at soil conservation, we're looking at composting. It's all biodiversity. When we look at the seaweed that comes on our shores every single day, presently, people look at it as a nuisance. Really, really nuisance. It stinks. That's what people say. But I say no, because the seaweed is a very important part of our lives. Beneficial for plants, humans, insects, and we can go on and on. But we need to face the fact that it's a gift from Mother Nature. And we you need to utilize it. We need to manage it. And I could simply say, people ask the question, can I use the seaweed fresh? Why don't you wash out the salt? I say no, because salt is a killer. It is a killer. And we have a, a banana industry in St. Lucia that we need to reform organically by using seaweed because seaweed itself kills nematodes. Look at the snails and slugs. Bitter salt, they're, they're gone. They're dead. The same with the pests and disease we get in our environment. So we need to know that composting is nature's way to life and we simple compost by using biodegradable matter especially in the household every day we use different foodstuffs in the home but it's a shame that we have not gotten to the stage that we have receptacles at home where we could segregate because we have a landfill that is saturated in St. Lucia what we are doing, 65% of what's supposed to go to the landfill is not supposed to go there. Period. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can tell you that, my people. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about the backyard gardening. That is where this comes important to us as a nation, as a people. I'm going to start a project soon with Big Chef Steakhouse in doing the composting at the restaurant. But I'm going to do it professional. I'm going to bring in the media houses to see. That is going to be the first step in 
using the receptacles. Because you have bottle, bottle goes in one, trash bin, biodegradable in one, plastic in one. The reason is you can recycle. We do not have the volume to recycle in St. Lucia, but we have it in the OECS. We have it. I wrote a project on recycling the OECS. I look at different islands where we could bring the biodegradables, where we could bring in the plastic, we could bring in the, 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 the glass. Yes, we need to. Now, going back to the plant life, very, very important. Because when we look at biodiversity in the treatment of cancer and other diseases, when we look at what we call Zorti, sting nettle, simple, used by herbalists to treat skin disease, rheumatism, <laughs> and it's just the Zorti. Now, it itches, but simply you could heat or you dry. Once you heat and you dry, there's no sting. We're going to look at the ginger root. Ginger was used since the ancient Greek time. And you know, herbalists used it as a remedy for circulation, for infection, indigestion, and motion sickness. We're going back to the corn, the fiber in the corn, very, very important. It's from the plant called the maize. And the fiber, it's very important in the treatment of urinal tract disease. Also very important for the blood and kidney, kidney infections. And also important for kidney stones. A lot of people suffer from kidney stones and they have to go for surgery. But simple, you could use the fiber from the corn. Yes, and that is very effective. Let's go back to cloves. Mm -hmm. Clove we use as a spice. Okay. But when you look at clove, clove is very important. The clove oil, very good for toothache. Also internal digestive problems. So we need to understand that when we talk about biodiversity, it is the flora and fauna plus the microorganisms. I am a testimony with asthma, 6 to 16. My mother took me to all doctors, none gave a cure. Just stop. But I remember a, la a lady came to my mother's house. We believe in folklore. And she said to my mother in her dream, this old woman handed her a bunch of cannabis, marijuana, and said, if you take it to Emmanuel's mother and she use it for him, it's going to cure. His asthma, we were convinced. And I used it. I got cured. But what I did when I got cured from asthma, I started researching the herbs. But what we did, I did it through SAT, Super Action Theater. And what we did is we used to go to the older folks in the community. We got the the Jerry too, the Zeb Afe, the Zeb Pier. But there is no way we could, we could have taken it. It was just the Creole, just like um, our brother Laurent Jean Pierre mentioned. But I was very thankful for Nick Chubisco, the owner of Anchastley. When I was talking to him, he brought me this book, and it was called Caribbean Wild Plants and Their Uses. It was a book edited in Dominica by Honey Church from England that lived in Dominica. And it's got all the different wild plants and their uses. When I started researching on herbs after being cured from asthma, I learned that 70 to 80 percent of medication prescribed by physicians are from herbs grown in rain forest areas around us in our backyards the same like our grandmother said i point the bavaria i point the fait un goût pompon des fait un fait venir la chiwat la i remember toying visitors in the forest there is a grass called razor grass and when a client passes next to the razor glass, it gives you a slight cut. What I did, I took the leaf from the vivin and you rub it on. Heals in two, three days. Like magic. I want to say that we do not want to forget our 
pharmaceuticals, we do not want to, because all the medicines come from the herbs. We want to complement. So I want to say to our nation and the world that we need to appreciate our biodiversity. We need to work together cohesively to be able to have the full benefits of our biodiversity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You are watching Perspectives. We will take a break and be right back. To keep it fresh, chill it. To get it hot, cook it. To keep it clean, wash it. Do all that and more with top brand appliances from Quartz. Try that recipe on a new stove. Keep those fruit bowls chilled in the latest design fridge. Get laundry done with a brand new washer and dryer combo. Purchase any Whirlpool product and get a chance to win $8,000. Shop with Quartz Ready Finance and pay nothing until June. Only at Quartz. Bringing value home. She keep nagging me about changing this and changing that. Only fool in my head, man. She want a new kitchen. Something about a sexy front door. <laughs> she want wooden flooring and LED light throughout the house. Hey, I'm tell you that, hear that. Rennick and Company has great deals on all of them things. So check them out. That's it. Was it about the place you told me about the other day again? Whether planning to build a house or remodel an old one, you'll be glad to know that Rennick & Company has some of the best deals on doors, windows, flooring, classic and modern style kitchens, LED lights, and much more. Rennick & Company, shopping the world for you. Thank you for joining us on Perspectives. The topic today is, can biodiversity provide alternative treatments for cancers and other disease? On this, the 26th occasion of International Day for Biodiversity. And we are talking with an audience, having a comprehensive conversation about food and health, uh, our biodiversity, our food, our health. And so the topic has touched on food production, waste diversion, sustainable livelihoods, all of the interesting things that we find ourselves talking about when we talk about biodiversity, because biodiversity really is life and the variety of life. And so it will cover all these various aspects. And so we have a contribution from our audience member from the OECS. I thank Zenel and thank you so much, Dr. St. Rose and Laura for your excellent presentations. Um, well, it's a um, privilege to be able to partner um, with um, the ministry and its chairs on this venture. But I really want to ask a question on behalf of the men. <laughs> no, I know men um, really are uh, notorious for not visiting the doctor, mm. and there's a lot of you know myths around male health <laughs> uh, or supposed myths, which is why we're here tonight, mm. and particularly in particular male sexual health. Um, and we know now on the market there are a lot of products, you know, energy products, which I'm told have even caused death oh. to certain persons. So the question is, you know, are we sitting on a gold mine in terms of our biodiversity and male sexual health? We've heard the things about the Chichima, Chichima. and the Boabade. So, Chichima. so is this scientific or is it just cultural myth? Thank you. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> the men support that question. So, oh, yes. yeah, well, we won't give them chichima. They need more than chichima. Eh? <laughs> 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 they need some kalkan. Eh? Yeah. Kal -kan. <laughs> so, this is our biodiversity. Yeah. We should be exploring some more. Okay. And a lot of men are familiar with kalkan. You know, so this is a product that Eden Herbs mm -hmm. has put together, and a lot of people know it's a use it and we have done the research on it to authenticate and validate okay. that it works so here's for the men <laughs> okay. but you know there are too many young men that have some amount of impotence and it uh, relates to 
Lifestyle. Okay. Lifestyle. So you have to go back to the lifestyle. Of course. Yeah, okay. that's very important. But if you need the help, you can get it from um, Calcan. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> very <laughs> useful information. <laughs> Always useful information coming out of these conversations. Um, yeah, but there's, there's another plug too that grows in. It's from the R Rutasi family, which is also useful. You get it in the dry scrub forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a kind of a local Baba Day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but and several <laughs> varieties of Baba Day. I, I have not gone into the research on that, I must confess, <laughs> but it's part of our 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 pharmacopoeia, okay. our local our pharmacopoeia. I, As went, it were. I will make an interjection that see the professionals for this though. Don't, <laughs> don't mix anything and don't exploit our biodiversity <laughs> and certainly not some of these less um, yeah. conscious um, remedies using our endangered species. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the exciting research that is going on and uh, we have a researcher who is in the audience and did not get a chance um, in a previous conversation so I'd like for him to take the mic and uh, we're talking about the idea of um, research on bee venom mm. and what has been happening and how um, it's what has what it has been proven to cure and of course that brings up some of the concerns about our intellectual property and preserving it and um, mm. but Jean-Luc Egard who is a medical student from St. Lucia mm. um, has some information that is of course, I, I always like him to share because we want to be on the cutting edge mm -hmm. of science. Okay, so when we think about bees, it's been around for as long as we remember. And another thing is that it's been used in Chinese medicine as well as in St. Lucia, but we have so much unexplored tapped potential from medical honey or medicated um, AP toxin. So what I'm going to say today is the research on bees is mainly focused on the apitoxin, but also our honey in St. Lucia is very good based on what our flowers we have. If you think about the properties of the flowers, as Mr. Jopia has said, we have so many flowers to do different things, different diseases that we could take care of. These flowers have been pollinated by the bees. The proteins are in the pollen, the nectar. They bring it into the hive. That's how we see bees bringing it into the hive and then they compile it into something different. The honey has so much of these compounds in it. These from the moringa plants, from a little bit of aloe vera flowers. And we don't know the potential of our honey in the Caribbean. It's being tapped by the bees for all different flowers. Instead of one flower, it's all different flowers put into one bottle. A mini tincture that can really cure mostly anything. If you think about sore throat, we take honey and lime, right? Also, there's something called propolis from the bees that, you know, old people will tell you, you know, suck a piece of propolis, it'll be, your sore throat will go away. That's something that we don't really explore that much in St. Lucia. But the old people knew about it. Also, the elderly people will tell you that if you take a bee sting, don't worry, my boy, that's healthy for you. And we never knew why. Now, research and development has showed us why. And as, doc, as Mr. Jopier said, there's one wing for science and one wing for traditional medicine. And that's where it comes together. You know that when the bee stings you, you might get an anaphylactic reaction. Your body swells up, your lips get big. Nobody likes that. And it can even lead to death. But now that research has been being done on bee venom, we realize that there are compounds that are present that cause these reactions. Something called MCD peptide and something called phospholipase A2. These compounds can be removed from the bee venom, only leaving the good parts of it right now. Now, looking at the cutting edge research that's going on for bee venom, there's a compound called melatonin. It activates caspases, uh, which destroy the cells. It signals the self-destruction of certain cells. Now, there's been nanotechnology to create little spher spherules that has a phospholipid bilayer, and they put in some melatonin from the bee venom after it's isolated from the bee venom into the cancer cells, which immediately destroys it. It's been used so far for something called cisplatin-resistant ovarian cancer, which uh, it enhances the effect of cisplatin, and virtually it destroys the entirety of the ovarian cancer in the females. Also, 
it's been tested in vitro, not in vivo as yet, mm -hmm. meaning that it's been done outside of the body and not inside. Inside the body, the research has to be tested throughout mice first before it's been tested on humans. Another part of the research that's been going on is something called apamine, a part of the bee venom. So far, they've been looking at it through a Parkinson's point of view, Parkinson's disease. Now, what it does is protects the dopaminergic neurons from damage from the Parkinson's disease. And what it does is that it doesn't restore, but it slows down the progression of the disease far greater than all the available medicines we have currently. What I'm trying to show you is that bee venom has been around for quite some time, and our elderly folk has always been telling us when we get stung by it, don't worry about it. It's a really good remedy. But we never knew why. And now we have an understanding through research that it actually has beneficial effects and it can be quantified right now to these beneficial effects, but we just know if you take a bee sting, we should be all right. But if you're getting any shortness of breath, make sure you go to the doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Laura, are you? I'm, 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 I really am thankful for that contribution. I'm one of the gurus in St. Lucia in terms of a propolis was Donald Anthony himself. Not just for bees, but also for the snake venom. Mm -hmm. He's been working in this year. And some mm -hmm. of our local boys, we've not given them their dues, you know. Mm -hmm. Donald what? Anthony, that young man in St. Lucia, my colleague, my friend, my brother, have been pushing propolis. He introduced me to propolis. Mm -hmm. And any time, uh, I don't miss propolis at my house. Anytime I'm coming down with the common cold, or I feel a little way, I go to my propolis. And that is efficacious. It's mm -hmm. so good for you, that product from the bees. We, we, we want to open up the lines now so persons can call. I, I, but um, I just want to flag uh, Donald's yeah. contribution to biodiversity as a St. Lucian in terms of the snake venom, um, propolis, and his contribution. Sometimes we don't flag our people, you know. Donald is, is one of the guys who championed that cause in biodiversity as a forester in St. Lucia, and I want to give him the, uh, to, to big him up tonight for his contribution to the whole idea of biodiversity yeah. <laughs> in St. Lucia. Donald Antonio, a, lo a local boy, you know, and so forth. And he's been to India and all of that and promoting our, our stuff in St. Lucia. One of the okay. first beekeepers I ever knew, you know, in St. Lucia. So thank you very much for that contribution about bees. That's a, a vital part of our biodiversity in St. Lucia. I'll say more in a little while, but... Um, yes, well, yeah. of course, we want to continue the conversation, uh, but we are inviting listeners to call in 452-2693 and make their contributions. In the meantime, we keep talking to our audience and to yeah. our panelists. And to big up Donald Anthony. <laughs> so many people don't know of Lucian country life. Yes, okay. it's true. Yeah, what it's his true. family has it's put together yes, out it's in Balaton. He's a brother, he's ahead place. of his time, you know, yes, doing Lucian so much country work. Life. Eco tourism, you know? yeah. eco tourism. And, and, and protecting our parrots mm -hmm. in terms of climbing more than 100 feet to build parrot nests in the days mm -hmm. of Coco Charles. These guys have done a lot of work for this country. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're just so humble in a little corner, we never help them. But you know, thank God for them, eh? They keep the fire burning. And thank God for these opportunities yes. where we can talk about them. And but I bring also them want to, you. to talk about this little thing you have there. <laughs> we and have this a call is now? Called, uh, okay. This is a call? We, we'll take the call okay. and, of course, hold yes, on to that. Yes. Good evening. You Good evening. I'm um, Janelle, Dr. St. Jordan Lura. <laughs> um, congratulations to my two gurus and bad I was in particular. And Janelle. <laughs> Janelle, you're yeah, doing a very excellent job promoting where... And where you have to are, where bad diversity can go for the country. So keep doing that good job because really and truly God has blessed us with our biological resources and we as a country must be able to sound that loud message that we have it within the resources and we need to cherish it and get it um, developed in country for the benefit of the citizens. And yes, I agree with you, Laura. Big up Coco Charles. Big up Donald. Big up all the Perfect pioneers. Timing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations. Bye-bye. Yeah.
development of biodiversity in this country and flag the value of biodiversity. Thank you, Anita, for calling in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're one of the our gurus. Yes. Our gurus. It's, it yes. is very good timing that yes. we are talking mm -hmm. about people who have. Yeah. But I also to want to flag. The, before you go into but the capsicum, do you, do you which understand? Is stents, you know, yes. she oh, yes, has, she has put together. That. Yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah, so but this is a coloring book. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. it's for kids, but the adults learn you a lot. You got to start with it, the yes. kids. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the adults learn a lot. You know, they mm -hmm. look through that and they like the little book. That's and that that's our work. Anita, Anita's Anita's Anita, work. Yeah, we did it. We do a lot of work. As an environmental educator, her focus really was the youth, like you're saying, to get them in early. Anita did a great work in biodiversity in this country. She was the biodiversity coordinator in Saint Lucia and promoted us, sent us to conferences and, you know, open our eyes in the world to what is the importance of our biodiversity. But most importantly, we have developed, <laughs> we have a Caribbean pharmacopoeia, people. That is 30 years of scientific research from Tramil, where we have looked at our plants from a scientific, um, on a, with scientific rigor, and we have produced a Caribbean pharmacopoeia. That is now on CD where we have gone into the chemistry, the biochemistry, so we could tell you the biochemistry of the plants and well, why is it efficacious. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we have a call now, yeah. so we'll take the caller. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Please go ahead with your contribution. Hello. 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 You're on Perspectives. Go ahead with your Good contribution. Good night. Good night. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I would like to tell Dr. Pimper for good night. Good night, Inch. That's Inch. <laughs> and what Inch, that's Rudolph. Um, I am listening to you all. I'm using that media to get to Laura. <laughs> Laura, please give me a look up. Rudolph okay. Sender. Yeah, yeah Rudolf, yeah, Rudolf is one of the pioneers too in that movement too. Oh, in the yeah, early yeah, days, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. this okay. guy was on the field like a, like a, you know, battling with us mm -hmm. to preserve our cultural heritage. These are the guys we've forgotten, but you know, you know. I am yeah. the one who told him before about the Kalka. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kalka. Yeah, I, I have to give you royalty there. Yeah. 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 Very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I will do that. Very yeah. good. Yeah. No, but you know, one of the things we are trying to do, people now, is to take that knowledge and bring it to the hospital level. Dr. St. Rosa and myself have been working to put a medicinal garden. There was once a medicinal garden at Forestry, which is no more. In those days, it was a place where people came to visit and study about our medicinal plants. It was based on the Tramil model, yes. which, which, plants for which, um, which plant for which illness, which today we still want to create these medals in every hospital so that we can correlate it with the, with the doctor's um, computer. So you have the plants in the garden of the hospital. I come in as a, somebody comes in from the public. Say, Mr. Doctor, I have to go popo. Dr. Apasal Saki Bopo because he's Western trained if he's not St. Lucian. So you go to the garden, you take the plant, you make the person identify that's the plant they're using. He gets into his computer, he pulls up Bopo by the local name and the scientific name, and he sees the biochemistry. So he knows what that patient has been administering, self administering, so he could be better administer. To the health needs of that patient. Yes. That is the concept. And we've been pushing that for St. Jude's, we've been pushing it for Owen King, and we've been getting some kind of lukewarm mm -hmm. response. But the time is now for us to put a medicinal garden in every hospital connected to the computers of the doctors so that we are on the same page. Doc, people from St. Lucia could come and say, Doctor, say, Chichima, Amut, Kasevi. 
so he knows exactly what is the biochemistry of the tichima, so he can better deal with his patient. That is the concept, isn't it? That's Doc? right. And modern in modern terms, and in fact, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, some of our medicinal gardens. Mm -hmm. The plants are given what's called a QR code. Well, you know, for products, they have barcodes. Mm. Some of them have QR codes. And now we are given our plants QR codes. Mm -hmm. So somebody for a smartphone can go into the garden, just um, connect to that QR code, and get all the scientific data mm -hmm. on the plant. So this is part of what okay. we wish. To and do. now the OECS is here in the, in the house. I want to appeal to the OECS now, Guadeloupe and Martinique, a part of the OECS. There's something called the Codoplon. That is the disease caused by pesticides in the soil. And we probably don't even know if we have that. That's why we have so much of that prostate cancer in St. Lucia. So we need to be careful how we use these chemicals. In fact, these things are banned already mm -hmm. in the international arena, but they are still used mm -hmm. here and in certain parts of the world. That's a we need to be very vigilant. Good point to we need to be very to... vigilant about what we give our farmers. Not all that counts can be counted, and not all that can be counted counts. La mm -hmm. Very good. So we so need to manage our resources, and with the OECS, Guadeloupe is doing a lot of work. Guadeloupe are now producing pharmaceuticals for the European market. That's something with the people who produce um, or who purchase okay. um, pharmaceuticals for okay. the OECS. We, we should tap call. into that so that the resources, the money, could stay in the OECS. Okay. Because, because a, a lot of our call. money goes outside. Mm -hmm. You know, our import bills are too high, people. We our medical import bills are we'll too high. Okay, mm -hmm. so let us work with OECS to tap into Guadeloupe and Martinique to, to okay. keep our money here and to give ourselves Good evening, healthy. you're on Perspectives. Yes. <laughs> I need to fly. Good evening. Good evening. It is, it is, as Fanon says, it is in the language that the culture is buried. It carries the language. The language carries the culture. From Fanon, Martinique and intellectual. So, it's important to not speak the language. Saudi is very, very important because it's what we have learned before. Et nous n'y pour expliquer. Et ça, c'est ça, nous qu'a fait en toi, Amélie. Mm -hmm. Nous qu'a allé faire oui chez cela. Et nous qu'a vie en commune. Et nous qu'a expliqué par ces mouna. Là, on est chikungunya. Là, on est dengue. Nous n'y oui mettre pour ça. Nous n'y fait du vent. Nous n'y zéba pic. Toutes ces bagages ça nous a étudié. Nous a fait oui chez. Et nous, et nous d'accord ces bagages ça bon pour chikungunya. 
avec dengue. Scientifically proven, nous avons expérimenté ça avec science. Ce docteur a besoin ni pour pour courir une épine nous parce que nous devons nous te hâte devant nous pas aujourd'hui so believe it or not <laughs> we have come to the end of our time <laughs> and um, we have had such a rich conversation about our food and our health and our biodiversity the sustainable use of it the need for more research and for documentation for our of our traditions and our culture for the inclusion of traditional medicine uh, and um, pharmaceutical medicine where they can rely, where they can both lie happily. Um, and of course, for the callers who want more information, you can reach out, of course, to Dr. Gilbertha St. Rose of Eden Hoops and Mr. Laurent Jopier uh, from Tramil, the traditional medicines of the islands. At this point, I would want to say thank you to our audience, thank you to our panelists, thank you to our sponsors, our collaborators, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, and the department, the government departments responsible for agriculture, fisheries, sustainable development. And of course, you for watching. Thank you for tuning into Perspectives.